Good morning, my friend. Hope you're doing well. It is Throwback Thursday. Today I'm going to bring you an old episode called Science and Faith in Hopeless Cases. This is going to be a great conversation about what you do and how you hold on to faith and and what the science looks like when everything seems hopeless. It's going to lead into a great Friday conversation we're going to have tomorrow with one of my favorite scientists who's also a Christian, Dr. Michael Gillen, and we're going to have a great two, you know, Back to back here, science and faith, and then believing is seeing with a great scientist who's also a Christian. It's going to be a great two day punch for you, and I hope that you, my friend, are able to start today. Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule you have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith, and everything starts to make sense. That place is called self brain surgery. You can learn it, and it will help you become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And the good news is, you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery to get it done. If you like the show, please subscribe so you never miss an episode, and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. Good morning. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm so glad to be presenting these ideas to you this morning. I'm interested in the idea of how we can maintain hope and faith in hopeless situations or hopeless case, hopeless cases. In my career, um, I've encountered a lot of people with a brain tumor called glioblastoma multiform, and it's essentially a hopeless diagnosis. And it threw me into a long series of years of studying the idea of how to maintain hope, even if the diagnosis is something that seems to be hopeless. So the reason I wrote this book is that a deadly diagnosis can create hopelessness. Any diagnosis can. Any difficult situation can. And when I can't fix it, I still need to be able to help people to have the best life that they could possibly have. And when I can't save the life, I need to inspire hope and make the rest of their life better. I need to have people be able to hold on to hope regardless of the circumstance that they have found. And I studied and learned these things, and while I was doing that, I lost a son, and I became one of those hopeless people for a while. And I studied the brain for years, and I learned that the brain doesn't just do something. It, it, it is your organ, the physical organ of your brain, but it also contains the spiritual organ of your mind. And all those things that make you who you are, memory, personality, mood, affect, neurotransmitters, and, and the person that you are. The brain is the organ that contains who you are. But it doesn't just do something. It also contains all of your experiences and fears and beliefs, your faith, your doubts, maybe your spirit. So the brain contains everything you are, but it also contains everything you know and everything that you think you know. Now, why do I draw the distinction between what you know and what you think you know? Well, let me tell you, the reason I draw that distinction between what we know and what we think we know is that I believe that the difference between what we know and what we think we know is a key factor in how we navigate the hard parts of life. In other words, when we believe that something is always true and then it turns out not to be true, like we are healthy or we are going to live a certain amount of time or that our spouse will always be with us or that our children will outlive us, when we believe those things and they turn out not to be true, it can be devastating to our faith and our hope if we lost what we thought we knew. Um, looking at brain scans over the course of my career of people with these enhancing tumors that turned out to be glioblastomas, and I would see them one after the other, and the person would live nine months or six months or 24 months or seven or 18 or three months, all these real people that I took care of, I would meet them, and after, after I had some experience with that tumor, and the first time I saw the image, I would say to myself, I've seen the end of you. I know what's going to happen to you. I could foresee into the future what was going to occur in these people's lives in the coming months and years. 
And glioblastoma, for example, there's about 18,000 new cases a year in the United States, about 1,500 in Italy. The median survival of those people is about 15 months. Despite our best treatments for the last 40 years, the prognosis has not significantly improved. The five-year survival of that tumor is less than 5%, and the 10-year survival is essentially zero. There are very few 10-year survivors out there. And these dismal statistics can produce hopelessness. And like I told you before, I learned that hopelessness is deadlier than cancer or anything else because if you lose hope, your life is already over no matter what happens. I saw numerous people that had difficult situations. They became hopeless. They lost their spirit. And even if they recovered from the problem that they were facing, they were never okay again. And I saw lots of other people that were devastated by their illness, but they found and held on to their ability to have hope and faith and peace filled their heart and their life became joyful even if they succumbed to their illness. And so as I was preparing to, to write this book, I've seen the interview, I realized I had a problem because I'm, I'm not just a doctor, but I'm a man of science and a man of faith. So I have both of these things. There are things that I know from science and things that I believe from my faith, and there was this seemingly irreconcilable gap between the two, between what I believed to be true in my faith and what I knew to be true from my experience with science. So the big question of my career then turned out to be, how do I reconcile my science with my faith? And when I was looking into the eyes of a patient I just told had this deadly disease, I needed to find a way to give them real hope so that they would fight and maintain their faith, hold on to their family to try to make the rest of their life a story that would be worth telling, even if they died from their disease, because hopeless people are never telling a good story with their lives. They're just, they're just miserable. And hopeful people tell a beautiful story, even if they don't win the battle. And so I started telling people the truth about research. There's, there's smart people all over the world, like the folks at the Chelligan Foundation that published my book in Italy. These people are working hard to find cures. And someday I believe that science will deliver the cure from this disease. And so I would tell my patients, hold on, fight, stay strong, eat well, exercise, hang on to your family because somebody out there is working on this disease. And I want you to be well and alive and ready to receive this treatment if you can hold on long enough to be there when those people come running out of the lab saying, Saying, we've got it. So I've given people tangible hope by asking them to hold on to the fact that there are smart, dedicated, hardworking people. God is giving people good ideas of how to fight these diseases. And just like many other diseases that we have cured through science and medicine, I believe that someday we'll do the same for glioblastoma. But as I began to learn and study and write and prepare to write the book about the definitive ways in which I learned to deliver hope, that's when we lost our son Mitchell, who was 19 years old. And I was devastated. I became one of those people who was hopeless for a while. My faith plummeted. And for a while, I thought I'd seen the end of me too. And so I can just tell you in these few minutes that we have together here what the real question is. The real question is, What's the deadliest disease known to mankind? It's not glioblastoma. It's hopelessness. But there's a verse in the Bible, Romans 4.18, where Paul says, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. And so I realized that faith lives in the gap there between against and hope. Faith lives in that gap when you can't believe, but you have to believe. That's where hope lies. John Ortberg, a writer that I love, has said, Faith is just hope waiting for tomorrow. So faith and science, my friend, are not enemies. I wrote this book to keep people hopeful so they could live as well as possible for as long as possible in the hopes that science would someday find a cure. And that for those people who don't live long enough for the cure to save them, that learning how to fight for hope will still save the rest of their lives. Hold on to hope because it's the most important thing that we have. Hope produces faith. Hope produces fight. Hope produces the ability to withstand even the most difficult circumstances of your life. So you haven't seen the end of you as long as you can hold on to hope. So friend, I would just strongly encourage you, hang on to hope no matter what happens. 
That's the idea that I'm going to share with the folks in Italy. That's the whole concept of what's going to happen when I give that talk because I want people to believe that something good is out there, that God has some plan in store. And whether it's today, in this life, or in the next life, God has a plan that's bigger than what I can see. His ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts or yours. But He does have a plan. And for us to be able to maintain the hope and hang on and fight and keep our faith and all of that, no matter what's happening in our lives, there's only one thing, really, that we have to do. We have to start today. Hey, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com, drleewarren.substack.com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery, drleewarren.substack.com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarrenmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at tommywalkerministries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them, tommywalkerministries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day.